I knew God was, was with me. I always used to pray. Uh, my prayer was I asked God to not to let the devil kill me out here while I was in the streets before I could get back. But I said, if you give me one more chance at life and music, I promise you, I'm going to shout you out and I'm going to testify and we're going to have a little church up in there. Waking up, thanking God. Every day is feeling just like Sunday. Wifey fly by my side. Green light, everything is going my way. Riding clean, living dreams. Just left the barber and I'm feeling like Midas. Heard him say, give him praise. What's in the water got you acting like this? Ain't a day go by that I don't try to thank the Lord up above. And if you wonder why I'm loving life, I'm close and I tell you what's up. Listen. Ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed. Yes, living every moment, no regrets. Smile up on my face, I'm like, oh, yes, I'm blessed. Yes, I'm blessed. Yes, ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed. Yes, living every moment, no regrets. Smile up on my face, I'm like, oh, yes, I'm blessed. Yes, I'm blessed. Yes, playing cards, laughing hard, barbecuing, waking up the whole block, music loud. Turning out, little kids are breaking out the bus stop. Life is good, really good. And every moment, no, I can't forget. I gotta say, I won't change. You're the reason that I am like this. Ain't a day go by that I don't try what? to thank the Lord up above. And if you wonder why, why? I'm loving life, ah. come close and I tell you what's up. Listen. Ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed. Yes, I'm blessed. living every moment, no regrets. Yeah. Smile up on my face, I'm like, oh, oh. yes, I'm blessed. Yes, yes I'm blessed. Yeah, you know. Yes, blessed. ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed. Yeah. Yes, blessed. living every moment, no regrets. Yeah. Smile up on my face, I'm like, oh, yeah. yes, I'm blessed. Yeah, you know. Yes, I'm blessed. Yeah, you know.
Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. You can catch the show. Super excited that you're here tonight. I'm going to be the host tonight as well as be the teacher. But I'm so super happy that you're here in the Infinite Casper show because it's a special night for us. I have a special guest that intentionally I didn't announce before the before the show and it's going to be awesome time. So all of the uh, all the ones that are joining us, thank you so much for just showing up. I know that you're hungry. I know you want to learn. And uh, it is our pleasure to be here every single week to share knowledge, inspiration, share some wins, answer questions, and just help you in your journey of becoming a better investor. You know, I, I get asked this question a lot and people say, hey, Carlos, is it the same to invest in real estate, private equity, and any other things that I might looking out there? And, you know, the principles are basically the same. If you are looking at any deal where you're going to put your money to work, either passively or actively, you should be asking the right questions. You should know exactly what to look for. You should know what are the things that create risks for the investment and the things that create growth, upside, and opportunity for you. I wish I had learned some of these principles way sooner. I had to lose some money to get curious enough to find out what does it mean to be an intelligent investor, a sophisticated investor, someone that knows how to look at a deal and tell a good deal from a bad deal. And I think that's at the core of everything, the goal of the show. Of course, we'll go deeper on different subjects. Like tonight, we're gonna talk about how to find the best deals in 2024. And my guest is actually someone that has found the best deals with me. So no better person to tell you a little bit of his story and his journey and how we together have found some amazing deals. But also because you want to take advantage of what's happening right now. And I'm going to preempt a little bit of this. The situation right this second is that 2024 is going to be probably the best year to buy commercial real estate, to invest in commercial real estate. Because there's many things that are coming together, which are not only that we've come off a year where there was panic by lenders, by sellers, by owners, by buyers, and there was a lot of distress in the marketplace. But we're going into a year where billions and billions of dollars of commercial loans need to be refinanced or need to be paid off. And there's simply not enough equity in those deals for this to happen. Because of interest rates climbing at record rates in 2023. Now, today, the Fed announced, I saw a, an article in the Wall Street Journal, the Fed announced that they may not raise the rates again. They, they basically said, hey, guys, we don't know anything yet. It was super non-committing -commit language on that article as far as what's going to happen. Like, they kind of indicated that they're going to lower the rates maybe three times this year, but there's really nothing that confirms that. And as you know, to them, the most important thing seems to be inflation, jobs, employment, these things, and not necessarily interest rates. And the way that they fight against raising inflation is by raising interest rates. So we truly don't know what's going to happen. We pray that interest rates will lower. I think everybody would like that. But at the end of the day, there's not really a solid indication that this will happen. So the opportunity is there because a lot of these deals need to be refinanced, sold, or if they can't be either, they're gonna be taken over by the bank. I'm already seeing emails in my inbox that say loan sale. They're not even saying property sale, loan for sale. And they're selling the, loan interest in the property, meaning they're selling whatever the lender has on the property and whatever that is. Now, that doesn't mean that the lender is going to come out and skate it either. It could be a discount. 
of what they originally originated the loan at. And this is super interesting because if you know how to spot a good deal from a bad deal, if you know how to ask the questions, then you'll know if you find a deal for yourself or if somebody that presents you a deal, you can say, man, that's great. Or no, thanks, I'll pass, right? And this is one of the things. So I want you guys to be very, very conscious of that. If you have questions along the way, use the Q&A the, at the bottom of the chat, use the chat. I mean, you, know, you, you wanna make sure that we are active in this group. I think everybody that connects every single week wants to learn, wants to participate, wants to really take their investing game to the next level. So uh, I'm super excited that you guys are here and uh, we're gonna get started here in just one more second. Let's see, as soon as I hit, as soon as I hit 50 people, I'm gonna get started. How about that? So go drag a friend in the room. <laughs> go drag a, a homie in the room. <laughs> Give me some fires in the chat if we want to hit 50 people in the Zoom tonight. Come on now. Come drag a friend. Somebody that you care about. There we go. August, he's here, man. Okay, August says that he's with someone else there, so I guess that could count. So I'm excited. Hey, if you're brand new in this chat or if you're brand new in this room, put a money bag in the chat. There goes our 50. Okay, there we go. There's our 50, James Katina. There we go. If you, there we go. Ricardo, my brother, dragged somebody in the room. So 51. See, I know you can do it. All right, so Anne is brand new in the chat, guys. Congratulations to all of you that are brand new in the Zoom tonight because we want to make sure that you have a great time. This is a community of hungry investors that uh, want to create wealth for themselves, for their families, and do it in a way that they not only do it for themselves, but they help other people along the way. They teach other people along the way. And uh, it's, it's very exciting for me to have someone that I care about a lot in the room tonight. Um, the team is having me share something in my screen. So I want to make sure that I that I honor their, their commitment to improve our show every single week. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes, thumbs up. Awesome, I did it guys. I'm running, I'm running my own show tonight because our office is closed and I'm, I'm home. So, hey, I'm, I'm doing an okay job. Usually Eric is in the studio running the show. So I'm gonna run the show. He's still gonna be helping me, but I'm, I'm, I'm running part of the show. Okay, so I want to make sure that we do a good job tonight. Pray for me so that I don't crash the Zoom or something like that. I'm usually teaching. I'm usually not necessarily handling the, the controller. So if you have not yet followed me on Instagram, do me a favor, scan the QR code, follow me on Instagram, share with your friends. My goal is to grow and help somebody else learn about investment. We want to make sure that people know what they're doing when they come and invest. Because here's what I found out, guys. What I found out is when people invest for the first time and that investment goes south, they might spend the next 10 years, 15 years, never wanting to invest ever again. And it's sad because it's not necessarily that uh, the, they, they got scammed. It's like they were not able to tell a good investment from a bad investment. Their skill set was not there. So if you're going to invest your money and all of you are going to invest your money, either voluntarily or involuntarily, because if you have a W-2 job, your money typically is being invested in a 401k, in an IRA, something like that. And uh, if you don't control it, if you don't control that money, then what? Someone else will control it for you. In fact, the system, the man or whoever you want to call it, wants to control your money. Wants to put it in the hands of fund managers that make crazy amount of money from the fees and provide mediocre or substandard returns. Okay, so this is something very important. So I want to make sure that you follow that and that we are on the same page here. All right. 
So super cool that you're here tonight. And um, I'm gonna lie, I'm gonna lean on my team a lot tonight because I want to make sure that I don't forget anything. But what I want to do is I want to introduce one of my very good friends. He's also my partner in many deals. And he is also my brother from another mother. Uh, some people actually think that we're actually brothers. And uh, and uh, you'll 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 be able to tell here in a minute when I put him when I put him up on stage. But I want to make sure that you guys know who is talking to you. So uh, James Katina, who's my special guest in the show tonight, he is a worldwide recording artist. Himself and his brothers, the Katinas, have been performing for over 30 years to audiences big and small. Correct me if I'm wrong, James, but you guys just perform in the Philippines to an audience of like 50,000 people or something like that. Did I get the number right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So 50,000 people. Hey, uh, Eric, can we spotlight James here on the, on, the, on, the, on the Zoom? Or do I need to do that? There we go. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you did it. <laughs> so James Katina, him and I met in a company that I co-founded a long time ago. I don't even remember how many years ago, but, uh, you know, I saw right away he was a leader. He was an incredible uh, human being, giver of people. By the way, if you don't know him, if you're just getting to know him, scan the QR code and follow him. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you start following him on Instagram. His music is incredible. Him and his brothers have blessed so many people throughout the years with their music. And uh, just so super excited that he's here with me tonight because uh, he'll tell you a little bit of the story of how we met and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I want to be sure that you guys know who you're talking to, right? He's, he's not only a recording artist, but he is a real estate investor. So not only an award-winning recording artist, but a real estate investor. And he's going to tell you his journey of how he started in real estate. And I wanted to have him here because I think it's important that you know that no matter what you're doing right now, maybe you're just getting started in real estate. Maybe you already have a few properties under your belt. Everyone can start. Everyone can start at any level and can become a real estate investor. Okay. So without further ado, I want to introduce you guys to... My brother, my partner, James Katina. Welcome, James, to the show. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Wow. Wait, 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 wait. Wow. I'm, getting, I'm getting a text. One second, one second. Uh-oh. This is important. Okay. This is very important. Let's go. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you, James. Oh, you're good. But bro. there's something important that I got to share with everybody first. Okay. So... This is this is critical. This is critically <laughs> important. Okay. Tomorrow, guys. Tomorrow. Yes. Happens to be James Katina's birthday. Man. James Katina's birthday. Tomorrow, James Katina is turning another birthday. <laughs> and we want to make sure that you know, James, you. that um, we love you. We appreciate you. Wow. That, uh, we, you know, everybody that I know that has met you and knows you, is blessed by you. So I want to be the first one to tell you and the whole CS3 team and, of course, everybody here in the Infinite Castler show, guys, please show some show some love to James Katina on the chat. Put some fires in the chat for oh, the man. birthday of James Katina. And typically he calls me and sings happy birthday <laughs> to me on the phone. So, bro, I'm going to do my best, but I might – Chop this up and kill it, Let's okay? Let's go. So I'm going to try, okay? Let's go. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, James Katina. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. And many Ooh. more. Bro. There you go. That was Probably fine, beauty. man. If you guys need backups in the Katinas, let me know, man. Oh, bro. <laughs> That was fire, man. No audition, no audition needed, bro. That Thank was so amazing. And I'm I'm seeing 
all of these birthday wishes uh, just scrolling through. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, family. And uh, Carlos, it's it's a man. What an honor, what a delight to be with you and our CS3 team and the entire community on the uh, Infinite Cash Flow show. Um, I don't even know where to begin, but but I just <laughs> want to just um, express my gratitude, gratitude and gratefulness. Even as I think about uh, turning another year tomorrow, February 1st, um, man, there's just so much to be thankful for. And uh, definitely at the top of the list right now in this moment is uh, just so grateful to, to be here amongst uh, like-minded people, people who are aligned uh, from the inside out. And uh, I, I think I could just uh, start my story there. That's really... It was actually about seven years ago, Carlos, 2017-ish uh, is when uh, I came across you. Uh, as you were sharing earlier, there was this uh, online opportunity, um, an affiliate network marketing program. And when I saw it, again, this is coming from the perspective of a musician. When I saw it, it just made sense to me. But I think the bigger blessing was the people that were behind it. Uh, and it was you, uh, the, one of the managing partners of this deal. And uh, it, it really um, started my journey in coming under a mentor like Carlos Sarguero to help me in really pursuing something outside of my passion, which has been music. And I'll, I'll just quickly mention, that I've been doing music. Uh, you mentioned it, Carlos, with my brothers, the Katinas, that's our last name. Uh, we couldn't figure out a creative, cool <laughs> band name. So we thought, hey, at least we'll re re remember our last name. So if you look it up, um, our, our website is thekatinas.com. Uh, we're on all of the different social platforms, uh, Spotify, YouTube, all that stuff. Uh, the band is called the Katinas. Like you mentioned, we just returned from the Philippines. And uh, uh, it's interesting because we're a band that's based here in the US, but uh, our music happens to hit in other countries, uh, a lot throughout Asia, Singapore, uh, the Philippines, all throughout the South Pacific, New Zealand, Australia. Of course, we too are here in the US, but it was a, it was a beautiful sight to be able to play our music uh, at the um, Carino, Carino Grandstand Park. So just imagine uh, where they have our presidential inaugurations in Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. It was yeah. a setup like that. And yeah. when we were doing our sound check, it was on a Saturday, we looked out and we're like, how many people are you all expecting? And they pointed to the farthest blocked down and they said, you see that mile mark, that landmark, that's as far back as the people wow. will be, be, be at. So it was this huge festival and it was a sea of people. Wow. Uh, I would say the, the, one of the highlights though, was that my brothers and I got to spend the day uh, at an orphanage, at a boy's mm -hmm. home, uh, 40 uh, preteen and teenage young men. And we just spent the time with them, played some music, uh, had backpacks and school supplies for them. And uh, when I think about this show, when I think about infinite cash flow, even that word, Carlos, cash flow, I, yeah. I think it's just a reminder that the cash, the money is is always going to be there. It's cash flow or it's it, it, cash follows cash follows purpose cash follows um goodwill and i think that's the question for all of us family is what what is it that we are pursuing uh i'm i'm also a real estate investor and i'll get into a little bit of that as we we go on here but even before i became a real estate investor i i really had to find something whatever that I was pursuing, it had to align with my purpose. 
And I knew that as I was studying, as I was being mentored by Carlos Sarguero, I knew that this was yet another path for me to not just have time freedom or financial freedom, but for me to, to create wealth. But why is that? The why is always important. And for me, it was so that I could impact more people. And okay. I don't know what your why is, but That's there true. is no doubt in my mind. Maybe you can't articulate it. Maybe it, it hasn't been put in a journal, but clearly there is a seed that's been planted in you. So I am a man of faith. I'm a follower of Jesus. And here's what I know. We are all fearfully, we were all fearfully and wonderfully made. What does that mean? We were created with greatness. There okay. is greatness in each and every one of us. It's not just uh, greatness to be become a great and successful real estate investor. No, greatness means beyond your wildest dreams. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind, while I haven't been on the Wednesday calls, um, you know, every time, but I do know this man. I know this man that is before us. Um, again, it was seven years ago when I encountered Carlos and I knew right away that this was a successful man. We all know his story. Uh, this is a, a self-made man, but it was his willingness to take time um, and, and, and not just mentor me, but ask me what my why is, what is James, right. what is your purpose? And it was on that premise. It was on that basis that we, first of all, created a friendship, a relationship, but then he, he just mentored me, um, in entrepreneurship. Uh, and then of course, later on becoming a, a real estate investor. And one thing I want to say, yeah. James, about, about that is that seven years ago when we met, yes, it was for a different type of business. Yes. But James was after creating an additional stream of income for himself and his family. I mean, that was the initial intent yeah. of him being even in this business with me. Yeah. But one thing that I noticed right away, and uh, I think that that uh, I believe a lot that when the when the student when the student is ready, yeah. the teacher appears. I love it. And uh, one of the things it. that I saw in James right away is that he was willing, he was hungry, he was wanting to take action right away. He didn't stop, and he was one of the top producers for us in this company. So he stood out. He stood out not necessarily by the stuff he was saying, but he stood out by the actions that he was taking. Mm -hmm by the level of effort that he was putting in. Because we knew right away when he started just, you know, popping in the charts, we knew, man, this, this guy's hungry. This guy wants it. And uh, I actually didn't even know you until I think we met at an event that we had for the business where we introduced each other. And I was like, oh, you're James Katina. Cause I had already seen his name like multiple times in the reports. And I'm like, oh, you're James Katina. And then, you know, one thing led to another. And, you know, that business, we had to shut it down because one of our partners just decided not to continue. But what, what endured for that is that James was able to still, his desire, his, his willingness to learn didn't stop with that. Yeah. And I remember you calling me, and you can tell this story, of uh, you calling me one one day and saying, "Hey, bro, I I, I think I want to come see you." So maybe tell him a little bit about that that story and what what led to the next things that happened. Because I truly think that James Katina is what one of uh, one of my original students, if you will. And I'm honored. I'm honored to be that, bro. Um, yeah. I, I so sh shortly after that uh, folded. Uh, I'll be honest, Carlos, and I may have even shared with you. Um, I, I see my sister Grace on here, Grace and Tap. We were all a part of this community and uh, I was bummed. I was like, oh gosh, man, we were starting to build momentum, but I didn't want that momentum to die down. So I just was like, Carlos, man, well, you know, I, I don't know if you remember, Carlos, I, I had all this money that uh, yeah. the residual, the, the income that I made, it was still in that online account. I never touched it. <laughs> 
and it was piling up. It was a pretty good amount. And I, I think one of the first questions I asked you is, I, I said, bro, what, give me some thoughts, give me some ideas. What should I do? And, uh, you just said, well, you know what I'm, I'm starting to, cause at the time you were already building your portfolio of real estate with your companies. And I think you, you said, I, I, I think I'm going to start investing in more real estate. And, and without even thinking, like, I had no clue, like, what does that even mean? I just said, well, man, let, let, let me get in on that. And uh, you, you sent me a couple audiobooks. One of them, the first one was uh, The ABCs of Real Estate by yeah. Ken uh, McElroy. And, <laughs> and, and be before you knew it, I was on a treadmill just eating up whatever this whole real estate game was about. And the, the next thing I, I said is, I called you and I said, bro, I'm going to fly to Denver. What's, do you have like just 48 hours? And I flew to Denver. It was like minus four degrees. And <laughs> we spent the weekend together. Uh, you and Myra uh, hosted me like a king. And uh, that was really the beginning of the real estate venture, I would say. But w one thing that I don't want to lose in mentioning, Carlos, is while I didn't know uh, how to connect the dots per se, uh, family, the one thing I will say, and, and I think it's the thing that I admire about all of you being here and coming to, to the infinite cash flow, whether you're here for the first time or you've been coming on a consistent basis, there is this desire for us to, to get the information, to really get the information that's necessary. And that's that's the one thing I did know. I I, I told Chrissy, my, my my wife, I said, babe, I I need to go see Carlos. And she was like, man, I, that makes sense. And she um, you know, she supported me all the way. But th that's that's one thing that I can't emphasize enough, just from my perspective, the importance in get, getting the information. But I think it's even bigger than that. It's getting mentorship being mentored, finding a mentor who you see he or she doing it. They're mm -hmm. putting in the work. You see the scoreboard, the success that they've had, and then um, seeing if that individual would be willing and able to mentor you. That was, was the biggest blessing because once I saw that in Carlos, I just knew that I found the person. And of course, we're like brothers, and, and that's kind of icing on the cake, so to speak. But it was really him taking time out of his busy schedule. This guy runs multiple, you know, million dollar companies, and he was willing to allow me to come on a weekend. And just, I don't even know if we spent time on the technical stuff, but you just were asking me questions yes. about, again, what my why is. You know, yeah. what is it that that Chrissy and I envision for our future? And it's those things that you you just know that all of the other stuff, the, the technical stuff that is important, it's all going to fall into place. Um, but I just wanted to mention that, Carlos, because I, I admire while there's so many new faces, a lot of names I, I'm not familiar with. But I think that's one thing that we all have in common here. Fifty five people here. We're all eager to get the information to be in the right rooms. What do I mean by that? Be in the rooms where you could tell that everyone here is aligned somehow, some way. We may have not met each other in person yet, but um, I just sense in my spirit that this is a room full of, of visionaries, people who wanna do more for their families, people who wanna leave a legacy long after we are gone. It, it is the individuals here that are gonna leave a long lasting mark. So when I went to Denver, um, I, I do remember two things or maybe three things that I left with. You, you said, hey, um, because you're a homeowner, uh, look into, and of course this is when the rates <laughs> were like sub threes, yeah, yeah. you know, money was cheap, right? Yeah. This was, um, I think it was uh, 2021. So uh, right around three years ago, and you said, hey, uh, there, there, there's a lot of equity in your home, um, but it's it's like it's just imprisoned. It's it's just it's not it's, it's dead. It's an equity, equity jail. 
yeah, yeah. You you need to deploy that money. And I said, okay. So, and 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 I think you said, you know, look into opening up an LLC. Listen, I went home, I flew home, and I think it was a you can attest to it, Carlos. The next day, I said, okay. hey, can I get a can I get a Zoom with you? I want to bring Chrissy on here. Because yep. Chrissy, you, you need to verify, help me, you know, communicate with Chrissy what I'm saying. Because it, you know, it was all jumbled as far as me trying yep. to explain it to her. But in that next week, I opened up an LLC and then I reached out to my lenders and we started the process of a, a refi. And uh, and then it was just a few months in that same year of 2021 when you and I, uh, sight unseen, we found a fourplex, yeah. which we still yeah. own to this day, found a fourplex online. It just looked like a cash cow, but uh, <laughs> in reality, it was like a a pig with lipstick on that's but right. it was cash flowing right so we yeah. did that deal and, and, and i want to make a little a little yes. a little interjection here is one of the things i noticed guys and, and the reason that i have james in the show tonight is because what i've noticed in him and i think that this is so important is like the level of success somebody has is very dependent to when you get instruction, when you get advice, when you get something that you know it's valuable because everybody knows if they're receiving valuable advice. Like Absolutely. very few people get advice and they're like, oh, I don't know if this is good or bad. They, you know it's good. But when you know it's good, the time delay between getting that advice and actually putting it into practice hmm. determines great success. Wow. When we delay, when we pause, when we get paralyzed, when we are still thinking about it, that's when I've noticed that this frustration sets in and you end up not doing it and then you wish you had done it. One thing that James did since he, I met you is like, we would have these quick sessions, these quick phone calls, these quick one-on-ones where I would say, hey James, go do this, this and that. And he will come back, not even 24 hours later. Okay, what else? It's done, right? So when I gave him the advice to get, hey, look, you have that cash in that virtual account. Let's withdraw it and deploy it. You have equity in your house. Let's withdraw it and deploy it. Yeah. He didn't delay. He went and did it. He was scared. Yes. <laughs> he was maybe fearful. First time ever investing in real estate other than your own home. Yeah. Right? Uh, everybody that you probably knew around you, first time they've ever invested in real estate was your own home. Yeah. And ever since then, it's been the series of actions that now not only he owns a building for his business with his brothers, he's about to buy another building with his brothers. We bought a fourplex together when we were still playing small <laughs> in real estate. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that didn't last for more than 10 minutes because the next asset we bought together is the one behind me. And it just so happens, and I'm telling you this because it is important for you guys to kind of assemble people mm -hmm. that not only believe in you, but are willing to follow your vision and your, and your journey. And so when we found this building behind me, the first person I called, because he's in Nashville, I was like, hey, James, go take a look. Go look at this place. So tell him a little bit about, you know, your feelings of when you were making these moves that were completely new to you. Yeah. I mean, the, did you ever think, man, I, I'm going too fast. Uh, I don't know about what I'm doing. You know, what helped you overcome those? Because I think that's kind of some of the lessons I want to teach tonight before I tell you how to find the best deals, which is a short session. And hopefully the idea is that you take these pointers that I'm going to give you in that part of the, of the show and you actually go put them into practice tomorrow. So what were you hey, going through mentally? Question, and I, I don't know what the average age is here of the 56 people, but I will tell you that when I when I had that weekend with Carlos, uh, this was early 2021, February of 2021. One of the thoughts that hit me, Carlos, and I think I've mentioned this to you is, gosh, darn it. I wish I would have known this in my 20s or in my 30s. But here's what I knew. And, and God was like affirming this, that, li dude, listen, it's not too late. Okay, you're in your late 40s, you're going into your 50s, you're good. Just, just 
put in the process, put in the system. So again, I, I and, and and so I didn't I didn't think in terms of man, am I going too fast? I think there was definitely an urgency because I knew the information was solid, it was good, and I just was like, you know, my reality is I'm not 20 anymore. So so while in some ways I was going fast, it was just what was necessary for me. Again, I don't know where you're at. Maybe you're a lot younger and 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 you have time. That's that's great. But you know it. You you know some of our levers are just different. Some of us maybe we are in a place of urgency, and so you are going to move accordingly. Um, even be even before we we jumped into this spot. Here, Carlos, I don't know if you remember, but it was on a weekend and normally I'm gone on the road, but I was home on a weekend and I was kind of bored. And uh, so I told my wife, hey, I'm going to just get on my laptop. And this dude pops up, this real estate guru guy. And and what he was talking about was real estate, multifamily. It was like being under a fire hydrant, just soaking it all in. What I thought was going to be a 60 minute deal it turned into like six hours. And so he proceeds to say, man, we've got a, a conference for real estate investors or for people who are who are wanting to get in the game. It's this time, it's this amount. Well, I ended up buying two VIP tickets, one for myself. And I didn't know who the other person, well, I knew who the other person was. He I called didn't me. Have time to ask him. You, you, yeah, you, you called me like right away. Yeah. We, we, we're we going to a conference, right? I said, clear your schedule. And uh, it was like the, the end of July going into August. I can't remember. And we went to that conference. And like you said, this is we were just the the new proud owners of a fourplex. Yeah. We leave that weekend feeling like, golly, we're thinking way too small. So true. And I got to think it was less than three weeks after that, that 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 conference, Carlos, when you got on the phone, you called me and you said, hey, there's a town called Murfreesboro or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, Murfreesboro. And he said, yeah, there's a property there. It, it looks like something that we might need to look at. And I think it was the next day, it was just 30 minutes going east from where I live here in Franklin, Tennessee. And it's that property sitting right behind Carlos Subghetto. And, and you know, you talk about being nervous, being fearful. Like we have a fourplex. It's a pig with lipstick on. And then driving through this thing, I'm like, I, I got on FaceTime with you. Yeah. I think I said, it's a real place. It's not a scam. It is a real place. I'm standing right here and I'm, and I'm showing him and, uh, I tried not to to show it, but I was like, "What in the heck are are we looking at this thing for?" You what know? did I get? What did I get myself into? Right. So, but here's what I do know about Carlos Alguero. This guy, he's relentless, and uh, clearly, this was a, a huge leap of faith. I mean, you go from a fourplex to this, but uh, he saw an opportunity. Even if it was the fact that we were up against, I think there was one group who was 50, 60 million dollars liquid yeah. that, that put a bid on it. And there are so many details and reasons maybe why we shouldn't have gotten that building. But here's a reality, family. We've been the owners of that building for almost two years now. Mm -hmm. So there's some, some things we can't explain. I think from a spiritual aspect, uh, we, we we understand that. There's just some things you can't explain. But one thing that I do believe firmly is when you put yourself in a position, when you put yourself in a position to win, how do you do that? Just by showing up. That's right. Showing up on a, on, a, on a Zoom like this. I mean, many of you have been working seven, eight, nine, 10 hours today, and you've showed up. You know, taking a trip. To see someone who you think could mentor you in, in the dead of winter. When you do those things, that's not in vain. That is not in vain. So again, 
I think it goes back to what you're pursuing, what your goals are, what your purpose is, and then everything is going to fall into place. There are going to be, there's still things I know Carlos will tell you that he doesn't know exactly how it happened, but he just put himself in the place. He asked the, the questions. He was willing to pay 25,000 and 100,000 to get into rooms. Listen, there's no guarantees that you're gonna see the return, but as long as you believe in what you're doing, as long as you believe that your desires and your dreams are important, not only to you, but to your family and to other people, that will be blessed. I'm a witness of that time and time again. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, go ahead, Carl. One of, the things, one of the things that I wanna share also with folks is guys, uh, I want to make sure that you guys have the opportunity to ask questions to James or myself. And uh, remember, guys, James' main gig is still music. Yes. He performs his music. That's his main thing. But he's quickly growing his net worth and he's quickly growing his portfolio passively because he's not managing our deals. He's not operating our deals. He's not doing anything. Ooh. He's taking a key role of connecting with other folks yeah. that either bring capital to our deals or he's also scouting for properties that he can get. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about here in a minute, where I'm going to share with you guys some of the strategies that we use here at CS3 Investments to get some of the best deals. But I want to make sure that you guys know, like when you put yourself in that position that James is talking about, when you show up, when you take action, and when you bring back results, because he was not passive, guys. He was the guy that that if I say something on a Zoom and I say, guys, you gotta go, well, you gotta go call 20 brokers, you gotta go call 20 people, you gotta go do this. He would actually go do it, come back the next time and say, Carlos, I've done it. This is what I found out, this is what I learned, these are my mistakes, this is how I need to correct it. What do you think? And it was a constant back and forth of communication of him getting polished so that eventually he can find these deals and properties because in the beginning, you don't know what to say, guys. Like you truly don't know what to say. And when I send him to go inspect this property, it was truly just a walkthrough of the place. Yeah. As soon as he confirmed that it was real and it was a place that we could go acquire, I was on a plane the next day <laughs> to go see it together. Yeah, And we attacked it. Like we, we did not just think about it. We did not just, okay, maybe this is going to happen. No, man, we attacked it. If, if, if he's a witness. We gave it 100% of our energy. Now, if you're choosing to be more of a passive investor, that's okay. But just make sure that whoever you're working with has this passion, this, this, this obsession of being the one that leads the pack. And one of the things that I think really earned us this deal because you deals like this that are trophies this this asset will be in our families for decades like you don't you don't easily win like let me make sure that you guys know like you have to earn these deals that's why when in commercial real estate you 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 get a contract on a property it's called you got awarded the contract mm -hmm. you got awarded the deal mm -hmm. because there's people there's competition there's others and especially for newer groups, and many of you guys will be newer groups, you got to know that you have to show that level of commitment, that level of passion. And that's one of the things that we've done since day one of this property that we bought for $18.6 million, guys. The deal today is worth $31 million. Two years. Wow. Two years, we have blown up the value of this property. By the time I'm done this year with this property, we will be closing in on 38 to $39 million of value of this property. We will be doubling the value of a property in three years. That doesn't happen passively, okay? I wanna make sure that you guys know that. But here's how you find these deals. Here's how you find these opportunities. And one of the things that we do consistently is if you want to get in front of the best deals in 2024, 
we are talking to people in the business constantly. We are identifying what we want. Now we know exactly what we want. Maybe you're not there yet, but we'll help you find what your target opportunity is, what your buy box is. And then what we do is we start connecting with people that might have what we ha what we need, might have the product that we need. Some of those folks can be brokers. Some of those can be other investors. Some of those folks can be lenders. So James, share a little bit about, you know, when we first started looking for deals after we got this one done, which was not an easy process, by the way, yeah. share a little bit with folks the, the journey of you starting to make those phone calls and starting to do that. Because again, guys, James is an amazing, an amazing bass player and, and musician, but you've never been a salesman in your life, right? You've, you've never had to do any of this stuff. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, so one thing that that I think is is would be of importance to share with our community, um, Carlos, and and you you've you've displayed that with 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 our team with CS three, that the beauty of uh, real estate investing, being a real estate investor, it, it, it's it's actually a team sport, right? So we all come in here, we all have our uh, clearly our individual skill sets and giftings. Um, we're all learning every phase of this space, how to become a real estate investor, whether you're active or just more on the passive side, just wanting to be an LP. Whatever the case may be, I, I think that's one thing that uh, alleviated a lot of uh, the unnecessary pressure for me, Carlos, is is because I, 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 you know, sometimes I would think, well, man, I'm a musician. I've never been in the 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 corporate world or the that kind of workforce. I'm not a salesman. Um, I mean that that was the case in in our other company, right? I, I there was some intimate intimidation factors that I, I dealt with initially, but I I think again when I saw the opportunity and 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 the concept of it and the return, I just number one I just I I remained myself. I just said okay, what are things that I can bring you know how, how can i be of value um to the team but also to the process and i just honed in on that and then the other the other part of it carlos that i think really was just something that i just knew i needed to do was uh, just remain a student what does that mean ask as many questions so uh, you, you know I, I i'm a proud man but when it comes to opportunities that are not necessarily in my 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 sphere so to speak like music and entertainment i just knew that okay if i'm going to go get the bag i needed to to learn some things and i'm a simple minded guy so the only way i can learn is if i ask questions now it helps a lot when you have someone that is willing to answer the questions and to role play and to point out you know, well, maybe try this or, you know what, hold back on that. Don't, it, you know, you're overanalyzing things. This is all the information you need. If you're, you know, talking to a broker for the first time, these are the, the three or four questions you need to ask. It was really that simple for me. And, and then I just kept repeating it until by the time I was reaching out to my 24th broker, it was becoming more and more natural and easier, um, not feeling so nervous. What's my point? My point is you got to start somewhere. You just got to get started. And when you get started in the process, whatever it is, you know, that, that, that uh, you feel like you can add to a real estate investment team, whatever that is, just, just get started and, and be willing and just know that you will make mistakes along the way. Uh, yeah. So it may as well thing that was, embrace that. 100%. One thing that I want to share with you guys is that, look, as a passive investor, let's say you are doing your thing, just like James Katina, he's doing his music, or you're a doctor, you're a professional, you have a W-2 job, and you just don't have all day to do real estate. Hmm. But here's the thing. A lot of folks, when they get when they get approached, when they get pitched, they don't have anything to compare to. 
Yeah. They don't they don't have a baseline to compare to and say, man, is this is this actually a good deal? And many times if the pitch is good, they kind of fall prey to the pitch. Like, for example, I'm gonna just give you guys a quick example. Uh someone to me today, one of my students actually in my academy, and said, Hey Carlos, somebody's approaching me for a fix and flip opportunity. They want to pay me 15 to 20 percent interest on a loan that I can give him for this fix and flip opportunity. And one of the things I said is like, hey, you know, one of the things that you gotta, gotta be careful with is you gotta know how to analyze the deal that they're showing you. Like number one, never loan, never lend money without collateral. I'm gonna say that again, never lend money without collateral. What does that mean? If I lend you $50,000, I got to have a value of bigger than $50,000 on the other end. That's what the bank does with you. So why would you lend money differently than the bank? And when you lend money, you should never lend money on a promissory note. You need to have a lean interest in the property that you're, that you're loaning money on. These are just some two tips that I want to give people tonight because it will help you avoid a bad experiencing when you're loaning money to people. Now, maybe you've done it before, it's been okay, that's great for you. But if you're just meeting the people that you are talking to about this, please be careful. Please do your due diligence. That money costed you a lot to make. The 25, the 50, the 100, whatever you're looking to put to work, costed you a lot of effort to make. Don't be careless with it. Take the time, slow down, ask questions. Hey, is this good? You know, she sent me this big thank you with balloons and stuff like that. Oh my God, I didn't even think about it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. So make sure that you have somebody you can go ask the question to that has done it before. Maybe they've experienced it before, right? That's one thing. The second thing, if you're planning now to be more of a passive investor, also learn how to spot a good deal, right? What is a good deal? What kind of cash flow does it have? How much can it appreciate? What's the location like? Who are the people behind it? Who are the operators? How much are you investing in the deal? That's a question that I always ask. How committed are you? What skin in the game do you have? And I think both James and I have really understood that for us, that's key. When we go show something to a person that could be an investor with us, that is key for us because it makes us feel like, look, we're committed to this thing. This is our baby. And the, the, the testimony of this is exactly the property you see behind those guys. Like, like there's no better testimony because everybody doubted us in the beginning. My lender doubted me. The brokers that were selling the deal doubted us. I mean, uh, everybody doubted us. Nobody's laughing right now. Nobody's doubting right now, right? They're, they're, they're praising the work. And that's exactly what we want to make sure that you know how to do. And this is why on Friday, I know that many of you have already taken advantage of the opportunity, but we do have a masterclass. We have a two-hour masterclass that will probably go a little longer. I'm going to warn you right now. We're going to share you exactly how to secure these deals, how to analyze these deals. We're going to share numbers. We're going to look at cash flow. We're going to look at locations. We're going to look at some of these things that you do. If you're investing in private equity, still, you got to understand some of these concepts. Even more so because typically private equity deals don't have any cash flow in the beginning. It's all based on a promise of appreciation and hopefully a future exit. One thing that I love about real estate is, look, it's real. It's bricks. It's mortar. It's tenants. It's people. It's cash flow. It's incomes. So when we look at that, we're like, okay, I know exactly how much we're going to make. And I remember, guys, the first time that we issued a distribution check, the first time that we issued a distribution check, James Katina called my phone. And James, did you ever have received a distribution check from an investment since then? Uh, other? Like uh, mother, like have yeah, you, have you had a distribution yeah. check from a passive investment before that? No, no, never, never. And and when you called me, I could hear the 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 excitement in your voice. Like, 
hey, Carlos, there's money that just came in into my bank account, man. And you were so excited because for the first time you saw your money working for you and not the other way around. Correct me if I'm wrong. 100%. Right? And, and, and bro, do you remember the other thing that happened? Because I got two checks. Right. You got the two checks. <laughs> I was like, was this a was this a hey. an o oversight? Why do I have right. two checks? And yes. he said, "Well, because you're a limited partner and you're a general partner. That's Those right. are two separate." So I, I still think that that was uh, that's pretty funny. You know, now two years later, that I I still tell people that story. It, you know what's interesting though, guys, is that he he wanted to also kind of venture onto the active side of things, right? So when he was instrumental and useful in us getting this deal behind me, you know, he earned a spot on the active side as well. So that's why he created equity by participation, because there's way, two ways of investing. There's, there's money participation and there's, equi there's equity participation with cash and there's time, effort, energy participation when you can learn how to earn equity with that. And that's what a lot of us don't understand. So that's one of the things that I want to share with you guys on the masterclass is like tell you, hey, if you want to be passive, no problem. Be passive. Take advantage of the opportunity. Make the money on the money. But if you want to start venturing to the active side of things, then get into the active side of things at whatever speed you're comfortable with. You can do it at neck breaking speed like James did. And we're just sharing his journey. Or... You can go slow. Maybe you do a deal or two a year. Maybe you invest some money that you have on the side. Maybe you learn how deals are structured. Maybe you learn how to find these deals in your hometown, in your backyard, or in towns like I did where I had people. See, that's one key that people forget. Yeah. It's like I had a friend in Nashville, Tennessee. And because I had a friend in Nashville, Tennessee, I started looking in Nashville, Tennessee. If James was not my friend in Nashville, Tennessee, I probably would have skipped it altogether. Because when I started looking here in Denver, I'm like, dude, man, this market is crazy. This market is overblown, overpriced. Let me go look in the cities where my friends are at, mm. where my good friends are at. And this is why I started looking in Nashville, Tennessee. This is why I started looking in Miami. This is why I started looking in the cities where I had buddies in, where I had friends in. So a tip for you to find the best deals, do not discount the places where you have good people in that could become maybe your boots in the ground partners in that spot. And we're going to go into that in the masterclass as well, as you guys go into the masterclass. Many of you guys are already connected there, but that's one of the key things because one of the things that I noticed uh, James, once, once we had a little bit of success is that initial success pushed you to now start, you know, doing a lot more, yeah. even though 2023 was one of the hardest years in real estate so far. Yeah. Right. But the learnings mm. of, of going after deals, yeah. of talking to people. Yeah. And I remember the first few phone calls you made to uh, brokers and to lenders like, like you, you would, you would get off the phone, call me, and say, "Hey, Carlos, man, did, what else do I tell him? Right? What else do I say? He told me this. What should I think? It was, it was active coaching, exactly. yes. back and forth. And that's one of the things that is very important. That as, as you guys get a coach, as you guys get into a room like this, as you guys get into a, a, a mastermind or whatever it is, that you're not just taking it all in. That you're actually going, putting in the work, coming back with questions. And then those questions get answered. You go put in the work and you get it done, guys. This is truly the way that you build wealth, that you build a portfolio. Mm -hmm. So definitely, I want to make sure that you guys know. The masterclass is available. It's only $97. I have a surprise for you guys uh, that comes with a masterclass. I'm going to offer it. Uh, team, did we decide that we're going to offer it just here? Or are we going to extend the, the masterclass opportunity for that now for the guys that commit to the masterclass today guys it's 90 97 bucks okay what you will spend for a nice dinner 
scan the QR code, confirm the masterclass. But one of the things that I've been telling the team a lot is guys, you, you, you have heard about AI so much in the last few months. Like it's everywhere, right? Everywhere, everywhere. We're using it deeply in our business because when I saw it come out, I'll tell you my journey about this. When I saw it come out, so when the internet came about back in the early 2000s, I was an early adopter of the internet and e-commerce. I made millions of dollars in e-commerce. James witnessed me making millions upon millions of dollars in e-commerce. And I crushed it with that trend. Truly picked up that early. You know what I missed? The trend that I missed was social media. When I saw social media come out, I was already a little comfortable with my e-commerce thing. So when social media came out, I didn't identify the opportunity that it was being presented to me to actually jump, take advantage of it, take action, and get early in that game. Man, I wish I had gotten early in that game. Because if I had gotten early in that game, I would have hundreds upon hundreds more time and attention than right now. And right now we live in an attention economy. So the next wave of this, I truly think the next wave of this is AI. And most of us will see it pass us by. So one thing that I don't want to pass you by is how do you start implementing AI in your business? So what I told the guys is like, look, all the stuff that we're consuming from paid stuff, from paid workshops, from paid classes, all the stuff that we're consuming and we're applying in our business, I want, our guys, I want you guys to package a few things in a masterclass that we're going to give. So that's only available for the people that buy the masterclass tonight. Wow. We're going to give you a free masterclass on how to put AI to work in your business and how to learn to use AI in your business. Just that masterclass probably worth 10 times what we're going to share with you at that opportunity. Okay, so I want to make sure that you guys know about that. AI is probably the, the most powerful technology today. I used it today. I use, I'm use. i going to give you a simple case study. And, and I don't know if you guys have gotten this WhatsApp update. Do you guys got the WhatsApp update that now Meta has AI on WhatsApp already? Oh, wow. Do you have it already or no? Okay. Most of you guys have not seen it. I saw it when it came out. It's just a little icon on the top of your WhatsApp. It's a round thing that almost they made it look like Siri. Okay. And... What I realized today is that I was underwriting a deal with one of my students and uh, he, he wanted to buy this, this property in Miami that uh, he didn't know if it was a good idea for him to do Airbnb on it. And I was helping him along and I was going to say, you know what? I don't know what the vacancy, the average vacancy for Airbnb is in your area. And he's like, man, I don't know how to find that out. Well, let me ask my WhatsApp AI. What's the worst thing that can happen that says, no, I don't have that data. Sure enough, hey, what's the average Airbnb vacancy in Fort Lauderdale, Florida? And within seconds, guys, gave me three references and gave me the average vacancy rate in that area, 70%. Wow. Occupancy, right? So 23% uh, vacancy for Airbnbs in that area. Like that, seconds, information within seconds, faster than Google, more curated than Google, easier to understand, so fast. That's the power of AI. And that's one simple case study. We're using it for underwriting. We're using it for deal analysis. We're using it, uh, I just shared with the team two days ago, a tool where we're gonna start using it for tenant retention, for tenant screening, for you just so many things, guys. Customer service, save you time that you, right now you're spending doing other stuff. You just have to find out, it's like, how do I apply this to what I'm doing right now? The team said, hey, Carlos, am I gonna exclude the, the people that still have a W-2 job? And I said, no, guys, we're not gonna exclude the W-2 guys, because here's the thing. If you have not learned AI and learn it to apply it in your job, then what's probably gonna happen in the next few years, you're not gonna be replaced by AI. You're gonna be replaced by someone that knows how to use AI. Mm. That's gonna be the trajectory. Congratulations so to John 
for purchasing a master class ticket. Come on. Good job. Come on, John. If you don't know how to use AI, someone else is going to pop up and probably climb the ladder. Because AI, it allows you to do a lot more faster. And whoever doesn't adopt it, guys, it's going to be the same thing as social media. Like how many of us believe that businesses should have social media right now? Anyone that doesn't believe that a business should have social media right now? Right? Yeah. Crickets in the chat. <laughs> of course not. Why? Because social media has become an essential tool to get exposure, to get advertised, to get promotion, to get attention to whatever it is that you're doing. Now, you asked this same question just a few years ago. You would have like two camps. You would have a camp that said, yeah, man, I'm using it. It's good. You would have the other one. No, man, that's a distraction. It's not good, blah, blah, blah. I was in one of those camps a few years ago. Prove me wrong. AI is exactly the same thing. Just different because it's more powerful. Like right now, we're seeing like the infancy of the uses of AI. Eventually, and it's even a little scary, eventually you're going to be able to do some things that are just mind-blowing. So we want to get you early in the game, and that's part of the masterclass. So hopefully you guys make the commitment, get in the game. Let me teach you some real estate in the masterclass, and then we're going to teach you AI on a different session that comes included with the package. So um, James Katina, I'm so super thankful that you're here tonight. Uh, your journey is like, how many units do you have right now? How many units do you invest in right now? Yes. Um, I did tell you that that the, the brothers and I are are going in on our second one. So yep. you count all that, it's uh, it's got to be over 125 units. Totally. 125 units. In what period of time? In two and a half years, or not quite two and a half years, but... In two years. Two and a half years Ed, from yeah. from from your own home that was your only investment yes to over 100 units in two and a half years yeah and i i will say um the blessing of receiving uh distribution uh you know not only has it increased and this is all passive income and has it increased my income but it it has it allowed for my family and I to literally uh, just not worry. And I think a lot of people know what yeah. I mean. I mean, uh, the, the be able to continue to to uh, expand in uh, in time freedom, really time freedom. I've got a daughter, as you know, she's graduating this year. So we've been doing the college tours. Yes. Uh, she's a 4.3 student, but you know, just all of the things, all of the things that that we we have to think about as families, as uh, as parents, um, we all deserve to have time freedom, financial freedom, to be able to take care of our main priority, which is our loved ones, our families, and then our community of people. God in, is entrusting each and every one of us to be leaders and influencers in communities of people. Mm -hmm. yeah. I. All I can say in my two and a half years, while that may not be a lot of time compared to the next person, what I've seen is how rich and how really unlimited this industry, this space of real estate, when, when you understand it and when you get the right information and when you're in the right community, it will change your life. So true. I, 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 can, I can firmly say that with with humility but confidence it will change your life so carlos thanks to you by the way i have just been having a um a, a conversation with with meta ai <laughs> I introduced myself i said um uh I'm, my name is james katina i'm a real estate investor and he's like hi james blah 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 and and said what what are you looking to do with real i said well my my group cs3 uh we were we're continuing to look for multifamily property that cash flows. Oh, great, James. And just gives me a whole list of things. This is crazy, man. Guys, it, For those exactly. of you, please come on Friday. 
No, if, that no, is no. Not, if that is not a testament of James getting a piece of advice and putting it into practice, like instantly, I don't know what it is. <laughs> we we didn't rehearse this part, by the way. No, no. Like, like no. We, we didn't at all. No. So I want to make sure that you guys know. Here's another cool surprise. For those of you guys that are still here, some of you guys are on the fence about coming to our mastermind. James Katina is our MC for the mastermind. He's our master of ceremonies for the mastermind. You're going to get mm -hmm. to meet him in person. Yes, you're going to be able to get his autograph. That's okay. <laughs> uh, he'll probably have his, his documentary CDs and his music there. And he'll probably oh, be signing stuff, some yeah. of those to you guys. But what I want to make sure that you know is that having him in the room is just changes completely the energy. So he's wow. going to be one of the guys that is going to be with us at the mastermind. Some of you guys are still thinking about it and, and are like, man, should I go? Should I not go? Uh, I want to go. Uh, we already, by the way, have 75 people confirmed to, come to the mastermind. Wow. Right? That's our, venue, our venue has capacity for 90 people. That's it. Wow. 90 people. We have 15 people away from maxing out our venue. And I want to make sure that those that come understand that it's a lifetime opportunity of you to be learning at this property, close to the property. We couldn't fit in the social room in this property anymore, but we're going to be super close. We're going to be walking the property, understanding exactly how do you get these deals? How do you get the money for them? How do you finance this stuff? How do you recruit the investors? How do you get called so that now the deals come to you? This is the next step, guys. The next step is that for you to get the phone calls, not for you to, to all, all the time calling out. There be a time when you get the phone calls. When you get the deals handed to you, when you get shown the properties that will make you wealthy, that's when it gets real fun because you've done enough of the work to let people know, hey, I'm a serious investor. I want to participate in the deal. This is what I'm looking for. Let me know. And then because you know what you're doing, you don't let that just go and, and, and really fade into the wind but you know who are the players and you remind them, hey, do you, do you have something for me? Do you have something for me? I'm super excited because we might be, I'm not going to say yes yet, might be putting a property under contract before the mastermind mm. close to this. Yeah. Okay. Close to this. That opportunity, because I know all of you, many of you guys want to invest. That opportunity will be shown exclusively to people that come to the mastermind and will probably max out the investment at the mastermind. It's not even 30 minutes away from this property, brand new asset, brand spanking new property. So super excited. My offer was accepted yesterday. I'm negotiating just final terms. Wow. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a done deal. Yeah. And uh, if Brandon is in the room, he'll tell you we're a little excited because uh, we're uh, the numbers look like crazy on the deal. And again, it's a deal that uh, we found because we're looking in the right places, yes. and we're searching and we're calling and we're finding out, and 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 we're not giving up, guys. A lot of the deals that didn't sell last year, by the way, are coming back or never sold. Yeah, you just need to learn to make those contacts, reach out so that you can grab those opportunities. Like everybody should be able to make a good investment in 2024, okay? Carlos, so, can I just say something real yeah, quick? Of course, did, did you say uh, you're right at 75 registrants? I'm right at 75. So maybe 15 least. more? 15. Well, so, so <laughs> you, you know, FOMO is a real thing, right? I, I, know, and I know that I could get called 20 people right now and we would we would max it out. Yeah. But I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on that. <laughs> I, I want our community to to take advantage of this opportunity. So I'll I'll wait. I'll I'll wait to 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 call my my horses because there's horses. a lot of people. But I, I I mean if if we only have 15 seats left, um it it it, it has Norman's name on it, probably Joe, yep. Lalantha. Um, and it, I, I, I want our community to have this opportunity. Opportunity. And in, and in reality, 
it's a tickets guys because when you buy a BAP ticket when you buy a BAP ticket you can bring a person for free so it's eight tickets left that's it you bring a person for free so I hope that the guys are putting the link in the chat but we have eight tickets left you get five hundred dollars off with my name when you put my name on the on the checkout Carlos will give you five hundred dollars off that's my gift to you and uh, the last October one, we didn't have any discounts, by the way. We did 1997 all day long. We had everybody there. And uh, sadly, James Katina couldn't join us because he was just getting started with his Christmas tour, which, by the way, this man and his brothers just go grow crazy for the Christmas tour. And they, how many shows do you do, like, in, in, in four weeks? A lot. Oh, like, well, we, we did double on some days, so it was like 25 shows in three and a half weeks yeah was, that's grind guys i'm still recovering from that tour. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's grind so yeah. it's 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 amazing that we can do that okay so i want to make sure that you don't miss the opportunity you still have time it's in nashville tennessee i just checked tickets man they're like 75 bucks from denver so cheap as dirt uh to get to the mastermind if you need to drive drive if you need to you know, hitch, hitch a, a ride with someone, hitch a ride with someone. Don't let anything stop you. If something's stopping you, please reach out. Say, guys, I really want to go. I want to make it there. This is what's stopping me. This is my, this is, this is my challenge, right? Burying, burying you getting married or you having already a commitment that is like unbreakable, make the time, make it happen. We wait for you there. Okay. I want to make sure that we answer some questions. If there's any questions for James Katina, Bro, I'm so appreciative that uh, you have come to us and uh, be with us and uh, just share your insight, share your testimonial. Uh, can't tell you how much I appreciate you hanging out with me for this whole hour plus and uh, just bless people in the room with your testimony and your journey. So, guys, if there's any questions, Eric, I don't know if there's any questions in the chat. Let's make sure that we answer any questions. Uh, I want to make sure that we answer any questions that we might have uh before we wrap it up i did yeah, want to before we answer on. some questions and you guys can put the questions in the chat or click the q a button congratulations to steve and michelle for purchasing a master class ticket let's, let's go. go congratulations family congratulations put some fires in the chat for michelle and steve Give me some fires in the chat for Michelle and Steve. By the way, I'm going to make the comment, Carlos, that, you know, with CS3, we uh, you're talking about the, the need to really understand and and uh, and understand uh, uh, AI and what what it all means. Even for a team like CS3, you, you got what we call BF. BF is Brandon Ford, but we still have to have AI. I mean, you would think that because we have the brilliancy of Brandon Ford, we don't need that. But no, we're we're honing in. We got to stay with the trends. Right. By the way, Brandon Ford, Brandon Ford is creating some crazy tools. Yeah. That that, that are gonna break some some molds. Like like I I've seen him in the last two weeks, three weeks, like like completely absorbed into creating our model that will be given to people at the mastermind to check out deals right now i'm not going to tell you that that is going to be 1000 percent there but it's a model where it's going to make things so much easier i'm excited about that because i see him pour all his energy into creating these tools that not everybody not every group has out there right and then eventually we'll inject that right imagine the day when you can feed to your ai bot the information about a property the location the rents, the T12, and anything else, and it'll give you an indication. I'm not going to say that it's going to do it for you yet, but it'll give you an indication. Carlos, it's a garbage deal. Carlos, look deeper into it. How cool would that be? Right? How cool would that be? Will that be foolproof? No, nothing is. But it will save you so much time to just go through things, and then when you find winners, they'll be like, yeah, by the way, this is happening. This is happening, right? And there's places in this country, guys, certain states in this country 
where the government is investing millions and millions and millions of dollars to bring jobs to their state, to bring people to their state, to open the doors to opportunity in their state. And when the government invests tens of millions of dollars in a city, in a location, in a place, you should be the one right next to it. You should be the one like that is buying something close to it that is real estate tangible because it's almost guaranteed that the value will go up. You guys have seen many cities in this country explode. Denver, explode. Nashville, explode. Miami, not even going to tell you about that. Right? All these places where they're friendly to business and they're basically saying, come to my state, come, come live in my state, come work in my state, come open a business in my state. It happens. It works. So when you see the migration trends, guys, you know, it's, it's data that is right there for you that you can use to get yourself pretty wealthy. So Rosa is asking a great question. What do you think about the returns Tesla offers for investors for the new software? Interesting. I haven't heard that Tesla is offering returns for, for investors on the new software. Does anybody know about what they're offering? Rosa, can you unmute and kind of kind of maybe enlighten us uh, on what they're offering? Um, requesting to unmute. But before that happens, I want to give a big, big shout out for Tony because he uh -oh. just got the master, not class, the master mind VIP ticket. Ooh. Let's go, Tony. Let's go, Tony. Congratulations, yeah, I, I, brother. I don't have my bill here because I'm at, I'm at the house, not at the office, but. Wow. That's <laughs> awesome. There we go. Congratulations, Tony. All right. All right. I, I don't know about the Tesla thing, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip that. Once we get the clarification, I can answer. Um, Jackie's telling me 240 units in Jacksonville, Florida. Jackie, did you send us? The OM, the underwriting, the T12, the rent roll. Did you send us all the information about the property? I'll happily unmute you if you want to tell us about the deal and we can quickly we can quickly look through it. Because this is what's going to happen, by the way, when you know how to underwrite quickly. I, I can underwrite in literally three minutes and tell you if it's a good deal or a bad deal. Cool, Rosa will send me the information. Hopefully Jackie will send me the information. Oh, Eric's saying that we have the other information, we're just missing the underwriting. If you don't know how to underwrite, guys, by the way, if you don't know how to underwrite, come inside. Come inside these doors. Come inside and learn how to underwrite. You can do it on a napkin, you can do it on Excel if you like Excel. You can do it on your phone if you like your phone. It's easy to underwrite properties if you know the math. It's easy to underwrite investments if you know the math. It's easy to do your homework. James, how simple it is to do underwriting. I mean, you 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 also yeah. learn how to underwrite properties quickly and find out, okay, this is a good deal and let's pass. Absolutely. Again, <laughs> it, it, I, I can't tell you enough how worth it it is to be in these these sessions in, in the mastermind. I can't wait to meet many of you in February because the underwriting, uh, while that was one thing I remember um, uh, when that was introduced, I, I just was I just was overwhelmed. I thought, well, man, do I, I, do I need some kind of accounting degree? To, it, it it was so simple, right? Just to to the the napkin underwriting, for example. Uh, Carlos, it, it'll give you uh, a preview on whether or not it's a deal to 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 go further into looking at it and bringing in, you know, um, someone like a Brandon Ford to do a, a deeper dive. So tremendously important. So important, guys. And, and look, I don't want you guys to get intimidated by that. It's simple math. It's like, you know, fifth grade math that you're going to be doing but it's about repetition. It's about doing it over and over and over and over again. And I wanna make sure that when you guys understand this simple math, 
that when you're looking at a property, like I find sometimes myself showing it to my kids, right? Last night I was invited to speak to a platform of, you know, many, many people on how do you teach your kids to become creators, to become entrepreneurs, to become like money-minded and to, to learn how to grow and be independent and be, you know, people that can have resources and learn how to find answers. And, there, and, and one of the things that I, that I understood early on is like, you have to share with your kids what you're doing. So if my kid is looking at me and I'm driving down the road, I'm looking at a place and, and I'm like talking about, hey, you know what, this, this place probably has 150 units. These are the rents. These are probably the expenses. This is how much the property's worth. They're picking that up, right? And now he can underwrite properties. My 12 year old can underwrite properties. He can do it simply. It's not hard, but I think one of the things that is intimidating when you have no one to lean on, when you have no one to rely on, then you got to do it all by yourself and, and, and see, man, am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? Is it, is it, is it truly what I want to do? Do I put my money on the line? Do I risk all these savings that I've been doing for three, four years? Uh, you know, I can tell you, James saw us. We put everything on the line for this deal behind me. Everything on the line. Even at the 11th hour, our lender surprised us with something not very cool. Said, hey, we're not going to give you a million dollars. We thought we were going to give you an extra million dollars. We're taking that away. Two weeks before closing, guys. James was part of the meetings. They were not comfortable conversations with the seller, by the way. I asked him for the million bucks. He said no more than once. I had to figure out what to do with the million bucks. Found the million dollars. Two weeks in. But when you put in a situation like that, man, you, you operate at a different level and you learn like, man, I, this is something I've never done before maybe, but I had someone that I could lean on. I had someone, a group that I could lean on. And no one could give me a straight answer because they've never been in my shoes. But I had at least the confidence to say, you know what? At the end of the day, I need to get this deal. And I don't want 2024 to be the year where deals pass you by. 2024 should be the, the year where you're in the driver's seat. You're the one in control. You're the one that, that dictates where your money goes, where your attention goes, and you're able to do things at a different level and really get into a place where you feel confident. James Katina, are we confident that we're going to close some amazing deals this year? 100%. Absolutely. Right. No doubt about it, bro. We've been getting ready for a time like this. And, and I'm yeah. telling you, I, I thank God every day mm -hmm. that he got us started about five or so years ago together, seven years ago together. I started investing in commercial real estate 12 years ago for business use, not even as something that I thought I was going to do professionally one day. But all of these things led to us owning tens of millions of dollars of appreciating real estate yeah. that cash flow like crazy. Mm -hmm. We've distributed just in this deal, guys. I'm going to give you a, a number. Just in this deal, we've distributed half a million dollars to investors last year. Half a million dollars was the cash flow that this deal behind us produced for investors last year. It's a pile of money, guys. It's a pile of money. And it's still not 100% occupied. We're barely touching 80% occupancy on the commercial. Once we reach 100%, add another couple hundred thousand to that cash flow maybe even $300,000 to that cash flow. I just renewed my lease with Morgan Stanley at this property. Yesterday, I signed the, the renewal. Five more years. Five more years. And you know what they offered me at first? They offered me $4 less than that we're paying right now. I looked at this. I was like, oh my God, I don't want to lose Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley is a, is a corporate guarantee tenant. Their name is in the building. It adds this flair of sophistication to my, to my project. And I almost thought about accepting their, 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 their low ball offer. 
I, I don't think I've even told you, James, this, this, this little side story. Like, you'll be tempted to accept the low ball offer. I'm like, dude, man, no. And then I, rem I remember myself, I reminded myself that, look, they've been there. They probably have a customer base that is coming to the building that wants to do business there. And you know what? I'm going to just actually counter with a higher number that they're paying right now with escalations year over year. Knowing full well that they could probably say, nah, we're moving out in 90 days. And then I would have to go look for a brand new tenant. And then the broker gets with me on the phone. And then the, 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 the boss gets with me on the phone. And I'm just trying to stand my ground, guys, right? Negotiation one on one. It's like trying to stand my ground. It's like, hey, Carlos, can we can we do this? Uh, I'm like, guys, look, I, I, I honestly, I'm going to be super honest with you. I've signed three leases in the last six months at $30 a square foot. You're paying right now $30 a square foot with no escalations. How about we increase 3% and then year over year, 3%. Let me think about it. They went back, thought about it. That's the lease that I have right now. Five more years with two, three-year extensions. 3% 3 escalation, guys. 3% increase year over year, which is crazy for the property, increases the value of the property. The leases before didn't have any escalations. They were keeping these guys at one number for the whole five year term. So these are some of the little tricks that you learn that they don't teach in school, boys and girls. <laughs> they don't teach in school. I didn't learn this in school. I learned from looking at hundreds of leases and seeing, man, these guys are getting 5% escalations, 3% escalations. These guys have this extra thing here. They wanted me to pay commission. Like, catch this. This is another thing that I'm going to share with you guys. They wanted me to pay commission to renew the lease to their broker. I'm like, guys, this guy didn't even do any work for this lease. How am I going to pay a, a, a commission to this broker? $15,000 commission to this guy that just basically sent me a... a piece of paper. So when they asked me, hey, Carlos, are you going to be okay with the commission? I was like, no, guys, I'm not okay with the commission. You guys are already here. I just met this cat. So I was like, okay. Like, work it out. That's what I told them. Go work it out. They came back a couple days later, and I'm like, shoot, man, I'm going to lose him over this stuff, right? Myself inside, I'm thinking, I'm going to lose him over this stuff. I have all these investors on tow and I'm not going to have fun telling them, guys, we just lost Morgan Stanley. They come back a couple days later. Hey, Carlos, uh, we really want to take care of him. Would you be opposed in us paying you monthly for his commission? We'll pay for the commission, but we'll just give you extra rent every month. Cool. <laughs> Let's do that. Two things happen there, guys. Number one, Increases my income. When I increase my income, my NOI grows even higher. So I got an extra bump on the rent by saying no to their commission and, and making them pay that commission. Not very common, by the way. The tenant rarely ever pays for a commission on a commercial space. Happened in this case, okay? These are some of the things, guys, that uh, I want to make sure, okay? I want to congratulate a few people, guys, that are already in the masterclass. Uh, if you have any more questions, please, please ask in the chat. Um, let me see. Let me see. I have I have some some cool stuff here. Wait. Yeah, Roy. Also, congratulations. On, who joins us on a weekly basis for Let's purchasing go. a masterclass ticket. And Where's one right? more special shout out for John. Because he not only bought a master class ticket today, but he decided to upgrade his executive ticket into a VIP ticket for the Infinite Cash Flow Mastermind. Congratulations. So super cool. I'm so excited for all these folks, guys. Many of them I've met never in person. I'm going to get to meet some incredible people in person. Alberto Lee, Jose Contreras, Tori, Stevan, Michelle Wells, Salzman, Steve. Doug, Joe Hill, Melissa uh, Thornton, Robert Gardner, Jackie Jackson, uh, Leantha 
was Singh. I hope I didn't butcher your name. Tony Alessandrini, Kevin Hufford, Roy Canterbury, guys. So super kind. That's just amazing. a few of the people that have bought it. Wow. So amazing. So super cool. Okay. Leanta has a deal with 42 units, and I have the T12 and PL. Leanta, let's do let's do something for you. Okay. Let's do something for you. I want to make sure that you bring that information to the master class. You're coming to the master class. We will, since you already committed to that. We will underwrite your deal at the master class. How about oh. that? Would that be cool to see a deal that someone's bringing oh. being underwritten during the master class? We'll carve out a little bit of time to underwrite this real deal so that you guys see in action how we underwrite a deal and tell you, man, this is a great deal, bad deal, mediocre deal. Let's go. Get it done. Okay. Amazing. That's going to be cool. All right, my brother. I don't want to hold you out uh, too long. I know you're uh, you're uh, it's it's later for you over there than it's here. <laughs> but again, appreciate you being here, brother. Thank you. Uh, any parting growth? Any parting words for the Infinite Cash Flow crew? Well, man, I, I'm so pumped. I'm excited to. Uh, as you know, I was supposed to be in uh, in uh, Dubai and Israel in February, but with everything going on, that trip got postponed, and so it worked perfectly for me to get to be uh, somewhere even better. And that's Murfreesboro, Tennessee at the uh, Infinite Cashflow Mastermind weekend. So I can't wait to meet the family. Uh, I know these are these are uh, not just real estate investors, but people who are going to win big. And so I, I just can't wait to meet all of you. It's going to be a great weekend. It's gonna be fun. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, team. Eric, Thank Al, you. Grace. Happy birthday, Jack, brother. Rick. Happy birthday. Enjoy your birthday Thank tomorrow. You. Love you, man. Love you, man. Take Bless care. You. Okay. Awesome, guys. Look, all I wish for you is that you find a handful of people like James Katina in your life, in your lifetime. That's it. <laughs> if you get friends like him, like your life will be infinitely easier in so many different ways. Right? Just somebody that cheers you on, somebody that prays for you, somebody that believes in you, somebody that calls you and, and, and supports you. You know what I mean? The, the, these are the people that you need to have around you that, that are like pure good energy so that you can get it to the next level. I'm super excited for all the people that have joined us. I see Arthur. I see Michelle. I see Betty. I see Julian, man. Thanks for joining me, Arthur. Sebastian Castro. He's one of our students at the Academy. Leanta, you're here. I hope I'm saying your name right, bro. Uh, Norman, Roy, of course, Grace Wilson, many of you guys, and uh, Chatrell, Steve Davenport, Tony again, Vanessa, Yoneri, one of our students in the academy, so many cool people in here, okay? I want to make sure that I'm not skipping any questions. Eric, Tang, uh, any questions that I missed? Where's Eric Tang? Um, looking, looking. So we do have a question from John. Um, what is your percentage of buy and hold and flips before you buy a property? Do you put in place an exit strategy? Always. Yeah. So whenever you, this is very, very, very good questions, guys. Whenever you invest in anything, you need to know when your money is going to exit the deal. Even if you're buying a holding, and I'm going to explain that. So when you're doing a flip, let's say you buy a property that you want to renovate and you want to sell in two, three years. You're already projecting a sale. You already know how much you might get for that sale. You're projecting that you're going to get your money back via a sale. When we buy and hold a property, we also plan an exit. And we typically have two exits along the way. The first exit is when we invest money, for example, in this deal, the projection was that we exit 100% of the capital in year three. So 100% of the money invested in this deal is going to be refinanced out in year three. Now, it just so happens because we've done so well with this property, it's going to be over the 100% of what was put in. When we return that money to investors and we pay them extra, 
of what they put in. Here's the beautiful thing. We still hold the property. They still own the equity. They still keep getting paid cash flow until in the future, we either refinance again and get more money or sell the property. At which point we exit the deal completely. But my goal with these trophy assets, guys, like I don't need to get rid of them. Like if this property cash flows over half a million dollars a year, would you get rid of it? And create a tax event? No, you don't want to create a tax event for you. You want to try to get the cash, put it to work in another deal, create a different stream of income. Now you're getting paid from the same money. Listen to this. From the same money, you're getting paid two streams of income. You can do it again, three streams of income, again and again. That's how you turn money into multiple streams of income. The same dollar eventually pays you $2, $3, $4. Same dollar over and over again. That's what leverage is. And you got to know how to use it and how to invest in things that do that. The bank knows, guys. The bank knows how to do this. Out of your dollar, they're getting about $5 of interest because they loan it to like five plus people. The only way that us as, as investors can do the same thing is to put it in commercial real estate because it is the only asset where the bank is willing to give you 80 plus percent of the money. Don't over leverage, but they're willing to give you 70, 80 percent. So with only about 20 percent of equity, I can control 100 percent of the property. It's very, very cool. You got to learn how to do it, how to do it right. But once you learn it, you know, this whole new world opens up for you to keep doing this over and over again. Okay. Eric, any other questions that I'm missing? Uh, no, you've answered um, all the other questions. Wonderful, guys. Here's what I want. For those of you guys that are coming to the Mastermind on Friday or the Masterclass, sorry, and the Mastermind, but the, for, the math, for the Masterclass, come with questions, guys. Like take this next couple of days to kind of process some of this stuff. We send a recording Tomorrow morning, I think on the, on email, check your email, watch it again if you need to, but bring some questions in the room. I'm going to have some prices for participation during the masterclass. I'm going to maybe I'll give a mastermind ticket at the masterclass. Um, so you might be able to get come to the master to the mastermind uh, by just being in the masterclass. That's one of the one of the reasons we have it so that we can have a higher level of investor IQ, investor intelligence, that comes. Why do we do this, by the way? It's not just to make some money, guys. The reason I do this is because I need partners in my deals. I need you in your city. Punch, please, where you live in the, in the chat. Can you, can you type your city in the chat? Lee, okay, I'm going to call you Lee. New York City. I need partners in New York City, guys. Chicago, Plano, Texas, Vancouver, Miami, California, Dallas, Fort Worth, Fort Lauderdale. I need partners in every single one of those cities. What kind of partners? Maybe you find a, a property that makes sense in your backyard. And I might have to call Michelle and say, Michelle, there's a property in Miami we're looking at. Can you go take a look? Can you go take some pictures? Can you can you take video? Do you know any people in town that want to invest only in town? A lot of people only want to invest in their town, by the way. They only want to put their money where they can see it. So if Steve is in Dallas, Fort Worth, and I'm like, hey, Steve, I found a deal in Dallas, and I know that I can trust you, and that you can be part of our crew, Hey man, let's let's go look at this property. Just like James Katina, guys. Like I I didn't know I was gonna buy this massive thing with James Katina when I started the, the whole thing. Like I called him because he was my friend that lived in Nashville. He was somebody that we knew he was super active with us and we could trust. And I called him, I was like, hey, come take a look at the property. This is exactly the same thing that I want to happen with many of you in whatever you are. But we got to get to know each other, right? We got we to gotta meet. We got to hang out. We got to learn about you, what you want, what you're looking for. Like Sebastian, for example, you know, he's in Miami. 
I'm going to try to do an event in Miami very soon in March. We're trying to plan the date and we're trying to get a bunch of people together because there's all these money that wants to go into real estate guys that doesn't know how to get there. Like literally try something for me. Whenever you're in the next social event, party, get together, whatever, try asking people what they think about real estate. Do you like real estate? Ask him that question. I've asked this question everywhere I go. I ask it at the gym. I ask it when I go to events. I ask it when I go to the church. I ask it to many people. I have not yet found more than a couple people from the hundreds I've asked that tell me, no, I don't like it. It's an overwhelming majority. Yes. I would love to get into it. How do I get into it? Some of them will be very timid. They don't know how to get into it. But many of them are willing. Just a testimony of this. My neighbor has invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in our projects. And it all started with, do you like real estate? One time that we were like getting our mail in front of our houses. Didn't know him before that. He had just moved in three months before that. Now he's a big investor with us. It starts with one question. It starts with one, do you like real estate? And if that's you that is answering the question, yes, I like real estate, I wanna learn, join us for a couple hours and see if you wanna pursue this, either passively or actively, okay? So for those of you guys that join us tonight, I wanna be super appreciative of you. I know we spent a lot of time tonight talking about you know, how to find the deals, the journey with James Katina, what has happened. I want to paint a picture of what could happen to you. It's real, guys. It's real. I've lived it. My family has lived it. Many people in this room have lived it. And I want you to be the next one. Okay? Appreciate you all, guys. Thank you for joining us. Join us in the masterclass. Hopefully, you join us in the mastermind. And I can't wait to catch you on the next Infinite Capital Show. God bless. Be blessed. Take care.